Good morning, y'all. We're doing a, a late June garden tour here in Zone 7B. Uh, mostly vegetable, but there's some other cool stuff in there you might want to check out. Um, this is, I think, the last Saturday in June. I don't know. I'm on vacation. Before we get started, I need to get my juice in me so we can, uh, I can stay focused. <laughs> okay, let's start in the West Garden. Uh, sorry for my voice. I'm stopped up. It's first thing in the morning. I've taken my suit of fed. Anyway, over here, this is where we grew beets and greens earlier this year. And now I'm just goofing around. There's some cantaloupe in there, watermelon, and a Cherokee purple that I transplanted. We will see how that turns out. There's also some dill seed in there and some cilantro in that one. I think the herbs will be fine. I'm not sure about the rest. And here, it's a little lesson for you. I sprayed herbicide on the other side of this fence. That's my driveway. And darn near killed this old grapevine. Did have green on it and that spills Modus operandi, if it's green, it's not dead. It was dead and mostly dead. <laughs> but it did get back. <clears throat> uh, it's got some new growth on it, so I just consider it year one and I'll train it again. And this is the raised bed. This is what we're using for cool season stuff this year. So we played out all the carrots, the radish, turnip greens, the onions you see there. They've been pulled and left to dry, and we'll store them. Use them up in about six weeks, I guess. That lettuce, obviously going to seed, but I'm not saving that for seed. That is basically uh, snack food for my chickens. Why not? Not much to see in this corner. In the bucket there is a pumpkin, it's a mini bear. And in the corner is pokeweed that refuses to go away. I'm gonna have to break out and do some serious digging to get rid of that thing. All right, and the herb center, looking at it from behind, it's some lemongrass. It's obviously rosemary. Over there, some chamomile. Two-year-old oregano. More rosemary, that's first year rosemary, which may very well end up in the ground next, either this fall or next spring. That's an Olydia basil. And down below it, the ground cover is actually first year oregano. Some modest chives hanging out. Parsley played out quick this year around here. I guess it was too hot. And that is a red Reuben basil. That's really good basil, I like that. And that's round two of dill. And as I said before, round three is coming in the produce crate. That is actually Asian basil. I thought it was Cuban, but it's not. <laughs> uh, the plants, those are not basil plants. Those are hot chili peppers from Arkansas Woodcutter. More parsley that's played out and more chives. An old green onion, <laughs> an old green onion from last year. This is the cilantro. We're letting it go to coriander. You can see the seeds starting to come in. This is Asian basil. Obviously gonna get some seeds from that. And in front of that is actually Mexican mint marigold, which some call Spanish tarragon. And then this is our sage collection. You've seen that before. I need to get in there and pull some dry leaves off of this. We get three types of sage in here. A couple of first year lavenders. And then true French tarragon. 
filled in nicely. And then in the shade over here, that container does not retain moisture well, so I guess it's, uh, I need to get it a new spot, some more vermiculite and all that stuff. Water just pours through there like sand, so. Oh, that's stevia. So the stevia um, gets to live in the shade most of the time because it's been taking a beating. And here's the garlic for making powders. We gotta get a dehydrator and a spice grinder. The garlic we're saving is inside the house. So let's go over here to the corn patch and the part of the snack row. That is a black mission fig. That is just a, uh, what is that thing called? And it's basically to fight mosquitoes, I forget. It's a geranium. This is part of the three sisters. This is the winter squash. And that is an acorn squash. And we got a few coming, looks like they were uh, pollinated. Hit them by leaves, of course. Um, just to reiterate, use winter squash around your corn that mitigates the raccoons getting in there because the vines are so prickly, the coons can't handle it on their paws. But I don't have the structure here to surround this completely. So that's just to honor my Cherokee heritage. And then here you go. We've got about 30 stalks, so I'm thinking they'll probably end up maybe 40 ears of corn, just snacking corn in. That's Silver Queen. Got some blooms coming. Those are beans. We got Blue Lake in there. And, oh, what is it, Giant of the Garden? Some llama beans and some red noodle beans. And if you look down in there, you'll see a watermelon vine. There's one on each end. I'm training them to go up the middle and around the sides to shade the roots on these you know, corn stalks. And the rest of this stuff is feather celosia. <laughs> this is 2022. That came in in 2020. In that bucket over there. And it spread like that. And here, that's actually a passion fruit that Boonchild gave me. This is uh, four suckers. There's a Mexico, a couple of pineapple, tomatoes, and a uh, speckled Roman. And then these two came from Baker's Creek. That, that's a boysenberry. So I'm raising them up, up, pop, up, up pop them again. They'll either go in in the fall or the spring. Blueberry, that's the pink lady. Didn't do much. First year though, it'll be all right. Yeah, that's my water running if you hear that. This is a Robeson blueberry. Same thing. Handful of fruit, but it's really the first year. They were planted last year, but you know how it is. That thing I'm impressed with, that's a uh, raspberry shortcake, bushels and barrels or whatever that company is. And it's doing fine. It's mounting up nicely. You have to get a weed out of that bucket. And for May, we had to cut down a dogwood. So I extended this strawberry patch. But I already had a third uh, sugar baby watermelon in here. So it's rolling along. It's running out to the west. I'm real excited about that. Now the East Garden. Or the shed bed. There is your okra stand. There's eight okra running in this trench this year. Much more than we need. And at the base, those are Space Master cucumbers. That is actually a creeping rosemary. And you can see in the wall here, these are the hot peppers. This is Tabasco corner. 
those are the Mexico tomatoes. Two of those up front. And there you have two speckled, two pineapple and one Cherokee purple. I'll show you more on the purple in a little bit. Back here are lima beans. Yes, I smacked that with the water this morning. I'll fix that later. But so far, so good with that experiment. And we got some eggplant tucked in here. And that is 12, 13, 14 sweet peppers. For those new to my channel, this used to be Jewel's Small Space Gardening. And I've, I've <clears throat> jammed a lot of, I've jammed more than what you're seeing right here into this little spot. This is 110 square feet. Uh, and I've lost count, but there's 12 and 27 and fours, 31, 39, seven, 46, six cucumbers, 52, three being 50, there's something like 55, 56 things in here. And I've had more in the past. This is kind of calm for me. <laughs> but yeah, I just slammed them in there. They'll be fine. And nothing but a thing. But there it is. Cherokee purple. Four laterals. Finally got the black mat under that one. And now I just keep pruning off any leaves that touch the ground like right there. You can see some dirt on those leaves. So when you see dirt, I just cut it off. Try to keep the fungus and bacteria and all that stuff off my plant. But she is, you can see one right there. I think there's four of them. Four fruits. And it's really just getting started. The way it's performing, it's really you know, it's only one plant but with those four laterals and then they'll go vertical like a blackberry plant. So it's really kind of like five tomato plants. I just don't know. I guess I'll have to feed it like it's five. Because that's a pretty, <laughs> that's a big spread. Some of the stuff in there is actually a flower seed to put down. I'm gonna let it get up a little bit more so I can pull out what I don't want. And that's a cayenne. That's, that plant actually, that's not the best one to show because that thing's liming up on me. But the habaneros, uh, that's really what I'm after the most. All three of them are looking like this. They're, they're getting, uh, getting little fatties and you can see first fruits. And you can see the jalapenos coming. So let's go to the north side. There's temporary housing for the birds. I hesitate to walk by them because they get all agitated, want to come out and hang with me. And I gotta listen to that the rest of the day. There's that blackberry. Yeah, we got about a pint in there. I'm going to pull some more today and be having some of that for lunch. There's elderberry. Got quite a few of those on there. More elderberry and more blackberry. Old grapevines hanging in there this year. That's kind of cool. I got to freshen up water for my birds. All right, let's check out this north garden. This is pretty cool right here. Plus, my, my phone filled up and cut me off, so I had to start over. All right, so let's head over to the north garden. This is the original garden. I just wanted to come in this way so you could see this layered look. All right, there's the day lilies and then dozens of sunflower heads. Right there, that's Rosa Sharon. I'm hoping that they can come in bloom while everything, whoops, sorry about that. They can come in bloom so everything's in bloom at once. But I've got some lessons for you on sunflowers. <clears throat> Basically, rule violation, you gotta put them in the back. Lots of shade, I have uh, pruned it out. 
get more sun in there. But also, they're competing for a lot of energy, nutrition. So our primary pasting station here, it's producing, but it's nothing compared to last year. So this will never happen again. <laughs> I've got plans, but this is about what's happening now. So we'll go over plans one day for next year. Beans are coming in, those are blue lakes. Got some celebrity tomatoes on the edges. That's actually a red noodle bean. And it's doing its thing. Some herbs down here as usual. Gotta have the herbs, man. Sorry about that, neighbors putting up a carport they found on Facebook. Happy for them, happy for them. Cucumber station, same thing. Although last year the cucumbers didn't do well back here either. Um, that's why I planted more cucumbers in the shed bed garden. There's some plum regals in there. That's an SMR 58 cucumber on the ground. And a couple of eggplant. There's the mega marley. Those are fantastic. They taste so good. Back here is Chance's Corner. This is due north on that post. And I got this black mat in this fence. This is a heat trap. Hot, hot, hot. That went down, it's coming out. That's a zucchini. Squash eggs, squash bug eggs are here. Plus the Asian beetles, which are not the red type, they're the orange type, they tear stuff up. Um, October beans will probably make it. And the blue barrel is a sweet meat. Here's that chip monk. What's up chip? One of them. This, too hot too hot up against that fence black mat this gets a sauna light back here you get in the 90s back here it's going to be like 110 115 um i don't know might just get heat loving plants and not grow vegetables back here although this is looking okay those are sweet potatoes and some october beans they seem to do fine Lemon bomb going to seed. There's basil. A couple elderberries. We're just jammed up in here. <laughs> and there's mama. Hey, what you doing, girl? She's setting on too. Hey, good girl, doing your thing. You can see up in there. That's what I was talking about. That rose of Sharon is starting to bloom. So hopefully we can get this hedge of flowers rolling. With these things still in bloom, that would be super cool. Japanese beetle, get off of there. Oh, here's that Asian ladybug. They got an orange. They typically have like a little elm on the front of their head. They're no good. Get rid of them if you can. This plant's being taken out this weekend. I asked my wife to get that zucchini, well, I don't know, four days ago. It was right size. Now it's a Bam Bam Club. So I guess we're using that for zucchini boats this weekend. <laughs> anyway, that does work. You can grow zucchini in a produce crate. Just leave the bottom open. But as you can see, you know, it's been a warm June. And so we've got the beetles. Squash bug eggs are here. There's some for you. So I'm not even fighting it. My friends know if I get it, get that problem, they're going out. I'm really tired of full fooling with summer squash. Very, very difficult around here.
camera just doesn't want to focus today. All right, something I don't typically throw in is the front. Uh, we do have some edibles back here. This, you know, you never know. We hit this once a month. This is just, this is a viney viney mess, but peppermint. Nah, I'm sorry, spearmint. Lots and lots and lots of spearmint. I don't ever have to worry about that. There's a different variety of daylily over here. Brighter orange. Some monka grass, lyra pea. Weed. This is some dahlias. And I forget what this one is, but it's cool. Beth likes this. That's another dahlia. That's another weed. Yeah. And this is our Washington Hawthorn full of berries. Great tree for non-migratory birds. It is loaded with berries. And it's sitting under this big old elm tree, which is at least 100 years old. And then the last edible, this is only three azaleas, by the way. Uh, they were below the porch. They were below the porch when I got the house. And I used to feed them a lot. And uh, yeah, that's a hedge, that's what that is. Anyway, these things standing up, those are dwarf cherries. And I tried one. Well, not too long ago, and they're very, very tart and not quite ripe yet. I guess you're supposed to cook with them. I got something going on with this one. Hmm. I don't like the looks of that. Well, when did you do that? You didn't look like that the other day. Now well, all the berries are gone. I suppose the birds have been nailing them. But you can see the problem here. This is west. This is the morning east. You can see that baby leaning. That one leans. The sun's right there. I'm not going to blind you, but it's not so much the morning the reason they're leaning. They lean because when that sun, see this one doesn't lean as much because it can pick up some of the west sun. That's the smallest one. Once it gets out behind this canopy here, uh, whatever's growing here is actually trying to get to the sun when it's in the west, not the east. Uh, we had Bradford pears out here. They did the same thing and the same result. Everything on this side was larger than all the items on the west. But anyway, it's looking pretty ratty out here. I'm just so busy in the back. That side looks okay, but I need to get in the azalea. This side's a bona fide mess. I need to pull all that ivy, feed them, prune them. There's what, one, two, three, four, five azaleas in there. I got four knockouts on that corner. And that's crepe myrtle that turned into a bush. It split in an ice storm. And I cut it back to the ground and it came back like that, which is cool. These I'm at a loss what to do. I might prune this one back so they stay even that way. You can't force that one to grow bigger, but you could cut that one back. I don't know. Leave a comment down there. Tell me, tell me what you would do. And see, this is just, I hate it. I just hate looking at that. That is so junky, bothers my eyeballs. It should be a cool day though. I'll probably get out here and knock that out today. Even though what I should be doing is building that damn chicken coop. <sighs> Thanks for watching all that. Drop the comments below. Uh, appreciate that. You guys have good luck in the summer, um, especially Z7B. It looks like it's gonna be a hot one. And you know, don't forget, whatever you're cooking, this will fix it. If it's bad, just cover it up with that.
Peace.